Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to get started. Hope everyone is having a good Halloween. Is anyone dressed up by chance? No? Oh, oh, one person. What are you dressed up as? Okay. Anyone else? All right, glad we're in the Halloween spirit. So some housekeeping stuff. Um, assignment, there is an assignment due tonight, and there's going to be one assigned today as well, so just a heads up. Any questions on that assignment? Yes. You can get a link, a share link from Envision, and that's all you need to submit. So it'll just be a, a text box for the assignment submission on Canvas, and just turn in that link. Any other questions? Yeah, how to get that link is in the slides. So it should be a share button, but if you just need a picture by picture uh, recap, it should be in the slides. Second, there's a jam session tomorrow from six to eight at Innovatrium, uh, which is right down there. Um, we're going to be having a speaker that's going to talk about some stuff about design and the work they do at the Innovatrium. And then we're gonna try to do some activities. Um, before we go, go into that, we wanna ask if anyone has anything they want to hear at a jam session or anything that they kind of want to see. Um, questions that we've seen repeatedly in jam sessions that are like uh, reviews of people's websites and work they're doing. Um, is there anything else people want to see that we can plan for ahead of time? It'd be nice to know that. Anything specific at all would be. Cool. Cool. And then finally for Envision. So if you haven't gotten Envision already, um, there's the code for it. The, in, the Envision team just gave us a code, so if you haven't made your Envision account, take a picture of this and then sign up through that link and they'll ask you for the code and that's the code. If you have already signed up though, either send us your email or we'll be here after class getting emails for people who haven't gotten or who have already made an Envision account and then we'll send those emails over for a free upgrade. Uh, so do one of those two things. Either sign up if you haven't already signed up or come to us after class or send us your email and we'll uh, get you upgraded for free. Cool. And then the word of the day is Pablo for attendance, and that should be live. And that's not Kanye West's album, is Kelsey's dog's name. Just heads up. Cool. Any questions about any of that? Cool. All right, we're going to switch over to a sketch demo. Alright, so how do I know if it's actually gonna work? I have to set it back up again? No, it's really good. I have no authority. Well, it's stuck. I'm not an authority on this. Mm -hmm. Technology is great. It's close. It's close. Oh, one screen, two screen, three screen. There we go. Okay. So really quick, we're going to spend the next um, 10 minutes just kind of going through some more basics on Figma and Sketch. Um, we haven't got to do this enough with you guys, and we wanted to be able to, to do that today. Uh, so. We're gonna make a basic profile page, very similar and akin to Instagram, and maybe like one actual feed item from Instagram. So I just wanna, through that, we're gonna be able to make some more shapes, change some colors, do this uh, technique called masking, and play around with some type as well. Okay, so I'm gonna make a new artboard. Again, if I wanna make an artboard, I can go to, um, sorry, uh, file, sorry, actually, just I just usually use the letter A, but there's also this button right here, which is, nope, that's not it. Sorry, guys. Yeah, well, I'm just going to press A for artboard, okay? So I press A, this nice uh, list on the right comes up, and it tells me which ki kind of device I can actually pick from, and I'm going to pick an iPhone 7, because I'm biased, and I like iPhones. And what do you guys normally, what's in a profile? I just showed you guys, but what's usually in a profile? For a user, username, okay, password maybe. What else? So I'm actually gonna first. I'll do an, an, a name. Um, that's good. So in order to add text, I'm gonna hit the letter T, or I'm gonna hit this T uh, icon up in the corner, in the left corner up here. Um, that'll be pretty similar in Sketch. There's an insert button and then text drop down. So I'm gonna hit my keyboard. I'm gonna say, okay, my name. My name is Kelsey Trebu. And it's kind of like really, really small and not really centered, so I'm gonna pull it in. And as I'm pulling it, do you see this line 
down the middle, uh, maybe you don't see it because it's hard to see up here, but there should be a red line in the middle that'll help guide you for where exactly it is in the middle of the screen. And I'm gonna make this bigger. So I'm gonna go back over to this right side of the screen and right now it's currently 12 pixels uh, big. I'm gonna make it like 22. And what, the way I did that really quick was I held shift and then I held the up arrow key and you can kind of shift uh, really quickly the size. All right, so there's that. Now it's still uncentered again. I want to actually center the text itself. So right now, do you see these, um, let's see, they're alignment uh, choices. And so right now it's left aligned. I want to make it center, center aligned, which it hard, you can hardly tell it did that, but it did. And I'm going to pull it into the center again. And there should be a red line that pops up to help you uh, see if you're in the center. And there's my name. OK, so what else would be in a profile if you have an Instagram account? The what? Oh, yeah, your default photo. Good. OK, so I'm going to pretend and make a pretend photo for myself. And I'm going to use a circle because Instagram likes to use circles. So um, I'm going to go over here to um, geez, this uh, Shapes drop down, And I'm going to select a circle from here. It's also called the Ellipse tool. Or you can uh, hit the letter O, and um, you should be able to make it. So I want to be able to make this, this uh, right dead center of the screen. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the Alt key and the Shift key at the same time. What that does, it helps you create a circle right from the center, and it goes out, and it makes it an even-shaped circle. So I'm going to do that, and I pull. I pull and drag and make it as big as I want. I'll probably make it about, that looks pretty good. Okay. So right now it's yep still nice and centered um, horizontally. And what else would I have in a um, profile page? Hmm? Maybe the amount of followers I have and how many people I'm following. So I'm going to duplicate this uh, text field that I have up here. And it's really easy to do. You can just hit Command D to duplicate or just the normal copy and paste, which would be Command C. Um, or you can do it up here. So I'm going to move this down, and it, you can't even tell that I duplicated it. I'm going to do it again. Command D, and it's already selected for me, so all I have to do is uh, move my arrow key, and it moves it. But if I want to move it faster than one pixel at a time, which is what I'm hap what's happening right now with the arrow key, I'm going to hold the Shift button. So Shift helps move everything in tens. So it's going to move it ten pixels at a time for me, and it moves it much quicker in an in, in even way. So I'm going to say I have, let's say, 1,200 followers, which is not true. I'm not that popular. Um, and I'm going to change the text size of this again. So I'll go over here to my right side, make it 12. It's probably better. It's not even that important how many followers you have. Just be you. Um, and I'm going, to I'm going to duplicate this again. So I'm going to so Command D. And now I'm going to hit Shift and hit my right arrow, move it over. Now I'm going to say, uh, I'm, maybe I'm following more people because I'm a follower. And I'm going to say following. I'm going to duplicate it again. The, the nice thing about duplicating is that it keeps the same style, right? And you don't have to, you don't have to go and add um, text again through the text uh, tool. And I'm going to say, maybe I'm going to say how many posts I actually have. So I'll say, this is actually true. I post on Instagram way too much. I have like 1,300 posts. Um, cool. I would actually say my posts are probably more important than my followers, so I'm going to move it over here. And the way I did that, so you see how I'm like moving it straight across the screen like this? Oops, my bad. Straight across the screen like this. So you can hold the shift key to also move straight um, horizontally or straight vertically. So you're not going all over the place, getting, so make sure it's nice and even every time you're moving it. Okay. So I moved it over there. I'm going to grab all these by dragging and pulling and then letting go. And cool, here's all my followers. This, this is looking pretty good. Uh, maybe I should actually put some posts on here. So I'm going to pretend to put some posts on here. I'm going to make squares. So we did this before, but um, let's add some more. Let's add some squares. So I'm going to hit the R key, or I'm going to go up here to my shapes drop down. And kind of like with the circle, you don't need to hit the Alt key, but you can if you want. Just hold shift to make sure it becomes a perfect square. All right, that was pretty good. So now, 
I'm going to duplicate this again. So I have some more posts by hitting, actually this time, instead of du uh, Command D, um, the Alt key is really awesome for also duplicating. If you're holding and dragging and uh, holding the Alt key and the Shift key and then dragging across the screen, I just made another version of this. So it copied it for me. And I'm going to do that again. So I have another, so I have like a three rows or three columns of photos. Okay, it doesn't look kind of centered, so I'm going to move it over to the right a little bit. And now I'm going to duplicate all of these. So I'm going to hit Command D. It's going to move down for me. Command D. And it did that automatically. Do you see that? How that happened? I'm going to do it one more time. So you select them all. I'm going to Command D. Shift and hold and push the, or use the arrow keys to move it down. Now I'm going to hit Command D again. Did it for me automatically. It's really nice. Figma does that and Sketch does that a little bit too if you, if you do it right. Um, cool. I only have like a couple more minutes. Is that cool? Um, yeah, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to change, I'm actually going to put a real photo in here. So a couple days ago I took this picture of a post-it note because so I was using a ton of them at work. And I'm just going to put that in here real quick. Uh, hold on. Yeah, ignore. Um, hold on one second. It's already actually grouped for me. I'm going to pull it in from another uh, resource. So I'm going to pull this in here. Oh, that's really big. I'm going to decrease the size of this. And what Figma, can, what Figma does is I can actually drag this photo and put it into one of these squares. Hold on. So it will do this thing, it's called masking. Okay, now it's actually not working. Well, anyway, I'm gonna, so there's this thing called masking where it can take the shape, let's say it's this, this square right here, actually let's do the square behind it, and it'll basically crop your photo for you or it'll mask everything else around it. So in order to mask, I'm going to select both of these by just dragging and selecting them both. Then I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say use as mask. See how that's pretty nice. You don't have to like make your photos the exact right size every time. Um, it's pretty nice. I use this tool a lot. Okay, cool. That's pretty nice. That's sort of okay photo. Um, and let me look real quick. I wanted to show you guys just really quick. So we haven't gone over this a ton because it's kind of hard to learn, but there's this thing in not even just Sketch and Figma, but there's this thing called the pen tool where you can create shapes and manipulate shapes with, have, that, have, that are made out of lines or they're vectors. So I made this like pretend comment icon and all it is is a rounded rectangle and a triangle and I mer merge them together. So this will be the last thing we do. I'm gonna make a rectangle really quick using my art uh, on my keyboard or up here and I'm gonna pull. Okay, that's pretty good. And I want, to, I want to round these edges. So I'm going to go over here to the right to my side panel. And there's this like curved thing over here. In actual, in sketch, it'll say um, border. And I'm going to make this five pixels rounded because I don't want it to have such a hard edge. Then I'm going to go over to my space, or sorry, my um, shapes drop down. And I'm going to click this polygon tool, which is really just a triangle. And I'm going to make this cool triangle. All right, cool. That's not really helping me. I want to actually rotate it. So to rotate it, it's just you're just going to go to this corner over here. In Sketch, there's actually a tool at the top of your screen that says rotate. You're going to have to hit that. And I'm going to turn around. I'm going to hold Shift while I'm turning this because it turns it all equally. So it's perfectly um, turned and straight. So now I'm going to put this next to this rounded rectangle. Kind of already starting to look like what I want it to look like. Yeah, it's actually pretty darn close. I think I might just leave it like this. So if I wanted to move this around, I can't because it's not grouped. Oops. So I'm going to drag and pull. And there's this uh, tool up here. It's called Union Selection. It'll be in the, kind of a similar spot in, in, uh, sketch, in sketch as well. Um, so if I click on that, this whole thing is actually called Boolean grouping. But you don't really need to know that because I just learned that today. Um, 
So I'm going to actually, I want to union, I want to put these together as one thing to make it one icon so and I can change the whole color of the whole thing instead of it to, to like select the different shapes of it. So I'm going to say union selection. All right, cool. It's all, now I move it around. It's one, it's one icon. And I'm going to change the color of this because this is kind of a dreary, boring gray and I'm going to make it um, blue. That's pretty fun. And um, what I was going to say before is for this, this is the last thing I'll talk, talk to you guys about is I want to make sure that this actually isn't where I want it to be. I want it to be like a straight line on the side of it. So I'm going to pull this over and I'm going to double click on this triangle. Do you see how it shows the, it's hard to probably see up there, but it shows the little points in every corner, little circles. So I can actually manipulate this shape with these things called anchor points. So I'm going to move this over because I want it to be straight. So I actually selected this at the bottom. See how it's blue now? I'm going to move this around. It doesn't move the whole object around, just moves um, that part of the shape. All right, that looks like it's pretty straight. It's actually not 100% straight, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. And I'm going to hit Enter, and now it's, now it's fine. And I'm still moving this whole shape around. It's still fine. I can do whatever I want with it. Um, yeah, so that's like a really quick and dirty intro to, yeah. So I want to export that other page that you made. Yeah. Okay, good question. So I want to put this in an actual mock-up in Envision. And instead of dragging a file, because like, uh, Figma does not allow you to do that, you guys have to actually export as actual images. So you have to select the artboard. Um, you can either do that in your layers panel over here or actually on the artboard itself. So I'm going to go to the bottom of this side panel on the right, and it says export. This is very similar in Sketch on as well. I actually have to hit this plus arrow on the right hand corner. Okay, cool. Now I can actually pick what file type I want it to export as. I can export as a JPEG, PNG. In uh, Sketch you can export as more things like a PDF or um, an, an EPS file. So I'm going to make it a PNG and I'm going to keep it, I'm going to make it two times the size because I want it to be nice and retina size for the actual prototype. So when I say export iPhone 7, and export it for me. I'm going to save it to my desktop. Cool, awesome. I'm going to check it out on my desktop. There it is, iPhone 7. And there we have it. So this is the type of file you guys could pull into Envision to use from Figma. And that's it. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Clicker around here. That's all right. <clears throat> all right, everybody. Can you hear me all right, right? So we have a small change to the syllabus. Uh, we moved one of the lectures. We were going to do interactive prototyping and then a bunch of visual design and then something called Research 2 did it work. And we're bumping it up. Remember how we did user research, trying to figure out what that problem was? We all had like an exercise where we talked to each other and tried to figure out exactly what the problem we're trying to solve is. We're going to make the part where we figure out if it actually worked right now. And the reason is uh, because we think this is the right time to start doing it. After you have a prototype, that's really when uh, you can start asking users if it's going to work or not. Before that, it's hard for them to show them diagrams or even paper sketches. It's good news, because it means we're basically done. Like, we've gone through the whole process here. Map, we did the sketching, we figured out what we're going to do, we prototyped them out, we're going to test them today. There's obviously a lot more that we have to do to make things look good and for them to work well. And the animation, the color, the topography, that's all really important. But what's kind of cool is that that's just sort of adding to the same loop, the same cycle. Build something, test it, figure out if it worked, over and over and over again. <clears throat> This is the uh, car prototype from last time. You guys remember this example? Basically, all right, we have a sketch of a car, but we have a real physical car that we can now use to uh, see if it looks good. We actually want to get in the car. Um, that's the making of a thing, right? We already made a thing. Now we're going to see if it worked. Does anybody recognize this? It's another prototype. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a smart car. It's the Google self-driving car. It's pretty cute, actually. Pretty high the delight factor, I think. It's a prototype, though. It's not an actual car. It's a much better, more uh, highly functional prototype, we might say, than that clay version. Um, and the benefit of that is you can actually put people in it and drive around and see if it works. It's kind of hard to tell on the screen, but back there you can see it's pretty much just a fiberglass body on some aluminum tubing. It's still not really done, but um, they're actually trying it out and seeing if you can put, like, they're putting children in it, apparently. Seems kind of reckless. Um, and then they're going to go back. And then they're going to try sketching. And then they're going to try prototyping. And they're going to test it again. Remember these design methods? There's these very iterative cycles of doing something, testing, going back. And the more of these you do, the better you are. So um, that's another good reason to do this early. All right, so how do you do this? How do you figure out if what you've built is good or not? Um, there's actually a lot of different things you can do. Um, you can just ship it and see if people use it. But a good thing to try is usability testing. Has anybody administered a usability test before here? A couple? Has anybody been a subject in a usability test, a participant? A couple? OK, it's pretty new to you guys. The idea here is we're going to see if it's usable, but we're also hopefully going to try to see if we're going to see uh, if it's delightful and functional and all those other pieces. This is a usability testing lab. Um, it's at like a big company. In the back is a user. <clears throat> They're probably paying her with like gift cards or something. And in the front, are these scientist looking people who are observing everything she does. These labs often have like one way mirrors. They have these like machines that track your eyeballs so you can see where on the screen you're looking when something pops up. Uh, seriously, they have like these audio, video recording things. It's pretty intense. <clears throat> um, and usability testing tends to fall into two different categories. There's either people who do it like this, like Microsoft probably does this, and there's people who just don't do it at all because they say they don't have time. Um, that's not a good way to go about it either. I mean, one's really expensive. It takes a long time. I've never done that other one. It's way too much work. Uh, on the other hand, though, like, it's really tempting to just say, okay, it's too fancy. I don't have time. I was talking to somebody about startups recently, or I was probably a couple years ago, actually, at this point. And uh, somebody said that they don't have time to exercise. They were too focused on their startup. And somebody else said that they don't have time not to exercise. Like, exercising, working out like their body just makes their mind so much sharper, so much more focused, that if they don't exercise, then they actually lose time by just wasting, like, on bad, wasting time on bad thoughts. And I thought that was kind of a good analogy to usability testing. OK, you don't have time to do a serious test, but you might not have time to do no usability testing, because you're going to spend so much more just kind of getting distracted. All right, so what's it look like? Uh, we're going to go through like a sample usability test, then we're going to do an exercise. First thing you need if you're going to do a test is you need to find some people who are going to do the test for you. Um, this is really tough. Uh, luckily, you guys have each other, so we're going to do an exercise in class today. But uh, the quickest thing is obviously what we do is actually this is a sign we have in our office. We just put this out in Sweetwaters in Carytown and try to convince people to come. They take a look at our app for like five or ten minutes and we'll buy them coffee. Ideally, though, you want to test with people who are actually going to be using the app. So for us, when we're testing, we try to get farmers. Um, there's a lot of other different ways to do this, and we'll talk about some other ways at the end of the class. Once you've got somebody to agree to the test, you just kind of sit them down and say, first of all, this is not a user test. We're not testing you to see if you're good at this or not. We're just testing the app. So this is like a safe space. Relax. Enjoy your coffee. And feel free to complain. Uh, we don't want you to be concerned. You're not going to hurt our feelings. Oftentimes, if I've designed a feature, I've even told people that I didn't design it so they can like, feel free to just talk shit on it. Uh, and I don't tell them. <laughs> even if it hurts my feelings, I don't say anything. Really, you just want to ask them to think out loud. You're going to also stand over their shoulder and watch what they do. But uh, it's kind of hard to see what's going on in their brain. So just say, walk through this app. And as you're going through, just Talk out loud. Tell me what you're thinking as you're going, especially if they get stuck. Remind them, what are you thinking right now? If you're going to record it, and I recommend that you do, you should probably tell them that you're recording it, because that's creepy if you don't. And just tell them if they have any questions to ask you. Then you don't just want to set them loose. You want to give them like a goal. Here's what I want you to do in this app. For us, it might be try to add a field to your FarmLogs account. 
Uh, I'm actually have an example of that here. Whoop. Hey, Mark, can you help me out there? Isn't that other tab? Oh, perfect. Okay, so. Oh, here, can you pause the Let's perfect. So, before we get started, it's a little hard to see and it's going to be hard to hear because uh, this room's audio is not so hot. What you're looking at is a Farmog screen on one of my users' computers. It's going to be real hard to see, but in that bottom left corner is going to be a little piece of my face. So you can see uh, that's actually me talking to them testing. We added some subtitles just because it's going to be really hard to hear. And there's also a big watermark on the screen because I'm cheap and I didn't pay for the screen recording software I was using at the time. Um, I'm going to ask the user um, <clears throat> to log an activity on one of their fields. And just pay attention to that a minute long, and we'll see what we come up with. Let's maybe pretend that you did your uh, cutting yesterday on them, uh, and uh, we can go through and log, uh, log an activity on them. Uh, click on it here. Got it. OK. Um, go down here, log new activity. OK, this looks different. Yep. A little bit. Let's say we did, um, what do you call it when you're not here? You got some rumors thing. Oh, hey, you can select the field. I like that. <laughs> Our users are amazing. Uh, so that was really short, but there's a couple things I saw in there. Uh, actually, can you guys, do, do you see anything interesting in that little clip? Yeah. Uh, he's questioning what mowing the field is called. Yeah. He's growing hay, and when he harvests hay, he calls it mowing. We think of it as harvesting, because like, you harvest everything, but in his vernacular, his term was mowing. You know, there's a lot of things we really obsessed over in the detail of some of these designs, but harvesting, we didn't even think about. Like, yeah, it's a harvesting. Good. Check. That exactly, to me, is like the perfect kind of thing that comes up in a usability test. I didn't even think that that might be called something else, but uh, it turns out that he had a different idea of it. And you know, the other bonus with the usability test is you get to show people like early stuff, and it's usually things they've been requesting, so you get to have those moments of like, oh, this is really exciting and cool. So that's a really small example. There's a lot longer, a lot more to that clip, actually, we could show, but uh, if you want to see it later, I'm happy to share it with you. I uh know. -huh. Yeah. I don't really know anything about how to use software, so <laughs> I did know that. All right. OK, so here's some tips for usability tests. <clears throat> First, just shut up. This is like so hard. If I had to tell you anything about usability tests, it's like one, do them, and two, just be quiet while you're doing them. This is going to be so hard. But like the temptation, I've done this in usability tests with other people. It's just like zip, zip, like eh, be quiet because you're trying to replicate a science experiment, right? Where is it? Right. Like the whole point of this is we have this idea about what this thing should be like, and then we're gonna put it in the world and test it. And if it works, then we know we should like double down on that idea. And if it doesn't work, we have to go back to the drawing board. But if you're like doing a science experiment where you're testing like some new kind of sugar, you can't give the people sugar and say. All right, here's this new kind of sugar. We, we think it's really sweet. We think it's way sweeter, but it's also healthy for you. Do you think it's sweeter? That's terrible science. You just have to give them the thing and say, how's it going? If you have something that you want to tell that person before they use the app, that you want to tell everybody before they use the app, that should be in the app. Like, you got to put that in there. In fact, that's a good test. If you feel like you have to preamble with something, make sure that if they need to know something right away, that should be in there. And if you're preambling with it, like, hey, you know, this isn't my final version, and yada, yada, yada. Take a deep breath. You know, if it's a lo-fi fidelity prototype, they're going to know it's not final, because it's black and white, and you use Comic Sans, and it looks pretty bad. So that's another good reason to keep it low fidelity. <clears throat> the other thing that I know I struggle with, and I see a lot of designers struggle with, is like your ego when you're trying to build something. If this is like your darling, your little baby. We talked about that before, right? Now, this is, it's going to be hard to just sit back and listen to people criticize, and you're going to think that they're wrong, but just try to let it wash over you and take a breath and uh, really just try to listen hard, take good notes. Ask a lot about why they're doing something. 
If you're not sure why they're doing something, ask them why. You want to see what they're thinking. Uh, and you want to make sure they're as comfortable as possible. Otherwise, they're not going to want to talk about stuff. Okay. <clears throat> we have an exercise we're going to do with you guys. Uh, everybody, we're going to do that thing where you pair up with somebody you don't know. Uh, so if you would all stand up, wander around the room a little bit, find somebody you've never sat with before, somebody you don't know, take a seat, and uh, the person on the left can open this link, the person on the right, open that link on your phone. I'll check back in two minutes. Once you've found your partner, go ahead and open these links on your phone. If you're sitting on the left, open Research 1. If you're on the right, Research 2. Don't show them to your partner. Yeah. You're opening this on your phone, your smartphone, not your computer. Everybody ready? Anybody need another minute? Okay. We're going to start with the person on the left. You are going to be administering a test to the person on the right. So open the phone, look at that link, look at the task. You're going to want to ask that person to go through that task. Hand your phone to the person on the right and observe them for about five minutes as they try to accomplish the task. I'm going to put up those directions we talked about before, ask them why they're doing things. Just Introduce them, hey, my name is so-and-so, I'm about to do a usability test on you. I know it's a little cheesy, but just go through those motions, practice, and uh, see if they can get through that task. These are apps we prepared for you to be intentionally bad, so we know that they're going to get confused. See if you can help them along uh, without talking too much. Okay. Uh, here are the directions, some reminders. You guys ready? Person on the left, five minutes to give your phone to the person on the right, and five minutes to give them a usability test. Questions? Let's wrap it up. How'd it go? Some of the left or is people on the left? What did you find? What's an example of something that you found? Yeah? Limited content. How's that? Yeah. That's upsetting. Any issues with the UI? Yeah. Yeah. Really hard to touch one of those two. Right? Sorry, did I take somebody? Yeah. Items on the menu are on a different page instead of being able to scroll. Yeah. Items weren't grouped in any kind of category. They're just sort of scattered around. Yeah? If I wanted to switch from D, there's no, back, no way to get back to the menu. If you want to switch, there's no way to get back. You're stuck. One more? No pictures. Are these all things you guys found out after interviewing your partner, or are these just your opinion? Make sure you're thinking about like, what their feedback is. You guys haven't seen this yet, I know, so it's just an exercise. All right, ready to switch? Put that phone down. 
Person number two, you are now the interviewer, the usability tester. Uh, person on the other side, you're the subject. Check in about four minutes. All right. What do you guys think? Usability issues? Person on the other side? Yeah. Uh, there wasn't really any information about what the actual exercises were. So right. If they didn't know what, say, a 4 by 50 backstroke was. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's a good one. Anyone else? In the back there? Interesting. That's a little confusing. Yeah? Totally. Yeah? Interesting. Cool. One more? Back? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not persistent. I like how he said, my user was concerned that, instead of phrasing that as like his opinion, like it sounds like you guys actually observed him and discovered that through the user testing, which is what we're doing. Very cool. Um, remember these, blasts in the past? What makes an app useful? Functionality, speed, accuracy, reliability, not quite what we're doing here. Usability, simplicity, does it match the real world? Is it obvious, is it self-explanatory? Is there confirmation, is there forgiveness? Is it well-organized and consistent? Is it delightful? I don't know if a lot of these apps were delightful. So make sure you're keeping all these pieces in mind. Make sure it's good for the world. A Couple of tools you can use to test really quickly. Uh, in person, if you're testing on your laptop, you can use QuickTime to record your screen on Macs. This also works on your phone. You can plug your phone into your computer. Use QuickTime to record your phone screen. Um, if you're on Windows, there are plenty of other apps that do the same. There's an app called Silverback that can record the person's face and the screen at the same time if they're using the Mac. Uh, remote testing, Inspectlet, super creepy app that you can put on your website and watch other people use your website. Really good though, you can't talk to them but you can play back what they've done. Usertesting.com, you can send out a link and hire other people to randomly spend five minutes and comment on your site. It's pretty cool. This is the classic book. It's called Don't Make Me Think. For like, it's what's called, called hallway usability testing or just very simple lean usability testing without the whole lab. Your assignment today, basically, we just want you to do a usability test on the app that you've been building. If you're doing your own track, take that app, go out and test it. If you're doing the one where you're trying to find spots to study, do a usability test on this app. Decide on a simple task you want the user to accomplish. Probably find a place to study. So that's the thing that was at the beginning, right? Hey, I want you to do this. Recruit two students. We want two different people. They should be students, because that's our audience. Do the test. This slide has tips. There's like a whole bunch of slides, so we'll post these and check that for uh, tips and tricks. Just write three insights from your test, three things you realized. As a bonus, you can update the prototype reflecting that. That'd be awesome. And just submit those in Canvas on Monday. Any questions? Great. Have a good weekend. Or week, guys. <laughs> and if you need